Hey everyone, welcome back. So many neighborhoods throughout New York City have been and continue to be impacted by the pandemic, including the Filipino communities, who, by the way, are embedded in the history of fabric labor care of New York City. The film We Are They highlights healthcare workers dealing with the COVID-19 crisis through music and choreography influenced by indigenous traditions from the Philippines. With the overall mission of bringing attention to the lineage of care, labor, and sacrifice defining the Philippine diaspora. Let's take a sneak peek at We Are They. It was around, I think, mid-March. Like, I remember the emotions, and for the most part, I remember what has happened during COVID. But sometimes when I try to think of exact moments, it's as if my brain doesn't allow me to. Because I think it's too painful. And joining us to tell us more about We Are They, please welcome co-directors Jacqueline Reyes and Deanna DeRoy and composer Will Symbol. Hello and welcome. Hey, Hi. Thank welcome, you welcome, welcome, welcome. You can unmute yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, welcome to you all. Uh, wow, wow, wow. Um, thank you, thank you for your service. Um, and you know, as artists, and of course, for putting our frontliners in the front lines of, of our, our storytelling. Um, I love your mission. Uh, and I would like to begin with Jacqueline, um, just, just to discuss a little bit more about the style in which you've chosen to tell this story, because it's very artistic and, um, and, and poetic, I might say. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for amplifying the story that we're trying to tell. Um, so what I thought was really important um, in telling the story of Filipino nurses uh, was to make it culturally relevant for the community that it is um, telling the story about. Um, and so uh, I thought it would be great to incorporate not only the, the voices of actual healthcare workers who have ties to the Little Manila neighborhood in Queens, but also um, have uh, Philippine dance um, help tell that story, um, not only of uh, who we are as, as Filipinos, but also different forms of care beyond like how we think of care. And so, um, Deanna, I, I know I introduced you as a co-director, but uh, let's just mention that you are also the director of photography and the editor, which means you are, in essence, like the, the other storyteller within the story itself, because um, the way you've captured it and duplicated, and it's, it's, it has a beautiful rhythm, just in the little bit that I was able to see. Um, and so, I wondered if in your in your style of storytelling, were you thinking along the lines of how to heal visually um, in representing the, the healing agents? Because that's what I refer to them as. Yeah, that's a really beautiful way of putting it. I think um, Jacqueline and I had conversations about this as well. Um, during the editing process, I felt like it was a healing process. I, I was living in, in Woodside, Queens at the time. And um, you'll see like little snippets of my son and my um, mom in, in the film. And it, I, want, I wanted to interweave my personal story with the stories that are happening in the neighborhood and also with the Filipino frontliners. So um, with the edit, I, I felt like it, it was a time for almost like hunkering down and, and trying to figure out the pace and the story and the feelings that I wanted to convey to, to the audience. And so, Will, I know I'm talking about rhythms and I have a reference to music, but um, let's talk about uh, the, I guess, the influences behind the, the composition. Um, is, is there folklore in there? I mean, you know, educate us a little bit about that. Oh, yeah. Well, in the Philippines, it's so diverse in terms of uh, 127 some odd languages, like, not even dialects, separate languages. And, and ethnicities and, and independent groups that come from that country. So um, for us here in the, in, in the States as Filipino Americans to try to define what that means when you have such diversity outside of that is always a challenge. And what does Filipino American music sound like? So um, it was a huge challenge is 
even in that small little pocket of Queens, we have such a multitude of ethnicities and languages and, and culture. And the question is, do I pick one and just go with it? Or how do I incorporate elements and everything else? And I've been so um, just blessed and fortunate to have been able to play with such amazing musicians over my time. So um, the, you, what kind of the tying throughout the whole um, uh, score is is the kublum which is that two string loop which really just gives us that pacing and what stood out with me with our healthcare workers is this thread of we just kept going like we just kept going we just had to do it and um to, for that to be our through line and the a two string uh lutes are found all over the philippines it's like uh, across the island is one of the one of two instruments you see quite often across so i want to start with that and then all our instrumentation and, and notation kind of went around run around that start all right, so it's your own version of a fusion. <laughs> yeah, I love it, I love it, love it, love it, love it. And, and plus I wanna introduce our viewers to your culture, right? And, and understand how um, coming from the diaspora, uh, you're, you're actually building on your ancestry, which is what this story is about. And also there's the fact that um, I believe there were 67 Filipino nurses who died during COVID-19 and, and it's really admirable and honorable for you all to make sure that that story is going down in history as well, right? Um, it, it, you know, as a person of color, I know how important it is to make sure that our faces and, and our contributions are noted. And so um, it, it's really the style in which you've chosen to do it that I, I'm really fascinated by. And so um, you've chosen the location deliberately as well. Because do you want to share a little bit about um, Woodside with us, uh, Jacqueline? Yeah, sure. Uh, thank you for all the those words. Because yes, it is true that um, seeing ourselves represented and telling our own stories is really, really important. Um, yeah, uh, Woodside is very, very, uh, it, it was a very intentional location. Um, the beginnings of Woodside actually, um, not Woodside, but of Little Manila in Woodside started with healthcare workers. So after the passage of the 1965 Immigration Act, uh, Filipino nurses were recruited to hospitals all over the country, including Elmhurst Hospital. Um, and then the nurses that went there started Little Manila. And so um, even though it's not explicitly said in the film, um, I wanted to also like highlight that, yes, this history is here. It, it's not just COVID-19. It's also just generally the long, like, I guess, history of Filipinos um, and its relationship or Filipinos relationship to the U.S. And so far, Bronx sides that are not familiar, we're referring to Elmhurst, Queens, right? <laughs> just, just a clarification for <laughs> Thank you. Is there, is Little Manila, Woodside, Elmhurst, Queens, right? So, and, and you, Deanna, um, what, what would you like to share with regards to the way you captured visually in, in making sure that the... Um, the, the ancestry, because even in the costumes and, and, and the way it's said, and, and I know there was this image of, of this uh, person dancing on the train station. So it was kind of like, I don't know, it, it kind of gave me a feel of like a ghost, you know, uh, in, in modern times. I mean, it's all abstract. I, 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 I mean, yeah. I the whole thing, but just in, just in the little bit I saw, I was like, oh man, wow, this is so beautiful. Yeah, I think like, you know, the, the combination of all of it, even like the music and the dance and the space, like it, it really brought some kind of magic to the screen, you know, and um, I think that um, I think that we wanted to honor, we wanted to honor the nurses and, and, and usually my form of storytelling is documentary storytelling. So I'm, we wanted to bring in voices of the nurses, but also to combine it with all of these different elements in, in a way that interweaves our own history and our culture and the current situation that's going on with COVID-19. And so the film itself is, uh, the running time is uh, a short, it's a short film? Yeah, it's about 10, 10 minutes long. 10 minutes About long. 10 minutes it's long, yeah. long for you guys to make it. <laughs> it took a while, you know, because this is like a passion project, you know, all of us have other things going on. And so um, we, it was a project we came back to uh, time and time again. And it also took time to process because we were living it, you know, and um, like I said, like when I was editing, it was a time for reflection of, of that time. So, um, yeah. 
Like you, yeah. you said it beautifully. It was a time for healing in the process. Yeah, and, and I think you all captured that in, in your respective areas of, of the film. And, um, and, and we have one word, one word time for you to just share what you want people to walk away with. We'll start with you, Will. One word. Yeah, on the spot. Um, gratitude. Jacqueline. Ooh. Community. And Deanna. Reflection. Beautiful. And I think we can all afford that. Gratitude, community, and reflection. Thank you all for being here with us. And you guys, once again, we are they will be screening at the Philippine Consulate, and that's happening on Thursday, November 18th. And if you're interested in learning more about them and the film, you can visit their IG at Little Manila Queens. All right, we do have to take a quick break, but when we return, we're going to learn about the different films featured in this year's International Puerto Rican Heritage Film Festival. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 